Using Obi-Wan as my inspiration behind today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create this really cool hologram effect. So let's check it out. Welcome to today's tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jason Ortega here with Blended Graphics, and today marks number 25 of my 30 days of Photoshop. After today, we will only have five videos remaining. I hope you've been enjoying these videos so far. If you have and haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit that button. As previously mentioned, today's tutorial is all about creating this awesome hologram effect, and we're using Obi-Wan as our subject for this. Now, I've seen multiple videos on YouTube of how you can create similar hologram effects, and a lot of them are really good stuff. What my goal is for this video is to hopefully offer you something a little bit different and some fresh ideas of how we can also create a different hologram effect. So let's stop talking about it and let's jump right into this tutorial. Okay, our background is already set up here and let's drag in Obi-Wan Kenobi. So we have him and we also have R2-D2 and C-3PO for this composition. I did want to introduce more Star Wars characters for this, so they're going to be joining along for the party. Okay, to start things off, let's turn on Obi-Wan Kenobi and we're going to press Command T and let's just scale him down and position him somewhere in the center here. I want to get my character set up first before we start doing any effects. Okay, let's now bring in R2-D2 and we'll position him somewhere here on the bottom right. So this looks good. And now C-3PO can come in and he's also going to be off to the right side. He's going to be further in the back, so we're just going to scale him down a little bit. All right. And now we can shut those two layers off and we're just going to focus on Obi-Wan for right now. So we need to go into that group and let's press Command J to make a duplicate copy, turn it into a smart object, and let's make a couple more duplicates as well. And we're making these duplicate copies just because we're going to have different varying levels of motion blur added onto these smart objects. So right now we're just kind of getting ourselves set up for that. And what we need to do now is let's create a new layer on top here and we're going to fill that with black. From here, go to the top to filter and go down to render and click on fibers. In this panel here, um, let's actually keep the strength up and we're going to reduce our variance just a little bit. Okay, and then let's go ahead and hit OK. We now need to convert this into a smart object and then add a levels adjustment and brighten all of this up quite a bit. Essentially what we're doing here is we're using these black fibers and adding that onto our character's layer mask. This is going to help give us a bit of a pixelated look so that way our character isn't completely crisp and clean with these nice edges and it's going to add a bit of a texture to it. So what we need to do is press Command T and we're going to rotate this so that way our fibers are horizontal instead of vertical. And let's go ahead and hit that check mark. From here we can go to our channels, Command click on the RGB channel to load up a selection of the black, and then go back to our top OB1 layer and then click the layer mask. And let's shut off our other layers. So that way we can see just him. And now you can see here uh, that we have this texture added on and we can paint away some of these spots that we don't need. So we'll just get this arm here. And then maybe a little bit by the face. I wanna keep that looking pretty clean. Okay, let's turn on our other duplicate copies and then we're gonna alter option, click on this layer mask, drag those to the other copies so that way they have the same exact layer mask as well. So step one is complete. Step two, we now need to add a motion blur. So let's start with this bottom layer first and we're gonna go up to filter, blur, and then motion blur. And with this being the base layer, this is gonna have the most extreme amount of blur. So something maybe around here looks good and we can hit okay. Let's reduce that opacity a little bit. And now we need to add the same effect onto the second copy. So let's go back to motion blur and this one's gonna be closer to the body. So let's reduce the amount. So something right around here looks pretty nice and hit okay. All right, let's highlight all of these copies and then we're gonna press Command G to group them together. And now for step three, we need to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and let's clip it below, hit the colorize box and let's find a good blue tone to work with. We can boost up the saturation a bit, play around with that. And we can also brighten it up a little bit as well. So something right around here. And then let's go ahead and add a new layer on top. Let's find a good blue to use. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the glowing effect to our lightsaber. So we can uh, click and then hold on the shift key, go to the end and click again to create the straight line. So we're just using a soft brush, doing that a couple times. Okay, and let's add a layer mask onto our group down here. And we're just gonna erase some of the edge of our lightsaber. And then we're gonna add a layer mask onto our glow. 
and we're going to erase the middle part of the lightsaber so we can leave that nice and bright. Okay, things are actually looking pretty good. We have a good foundation to work off of. He is looking a bit dull though, so I want to add a levels adjustment layer, clip it below, and I want to really boost up these highlights. We can even bring in some of the shadows for a bit of contrast, and this is going to help us out a bit. All right, so let's close out of this. We're adding a new layer beneath and condensing this brush tip on a soft round brush. And going back to a nice blue tone, we're just going to add a couple of dabs here at a low opacity, and we're just going to give it a bit of a background glow. Okay, a couple more dabs should do the trick. All right, I think Obi-Wan is good for right now. We can move on to the other characters. Let's close out of him and let's turn on R2-D2 and let's start working on this guy. So let's click on R2-D2, Command J to make a copy of him. And we're gonna turn that into a smart object. I just wanna have uh, one backup copy. And on this copy, let's go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer. And we're gonna bring in some contrast. So we're gonna bring up the shadows, we're gonna bring up the highlights, and this will start us off. Next, we can add an exposure adjustment layer, and we're gonna decrease this. This will be used for our shadows, so we're gonna turn them all the way down here. And then we're gonna press Command I to invert that, paint some of this back in, just on the right side, and essentially opposite of where that light's coming from, from Obi-Wan. So we're primarily just sticking to, obviously, the back side here, a little bit down below by the wheels. All right, and now we wanna do a bit of color grading. So let's bring in our color balance adjustment layer. And because Obi-Wan is glowing blue, we're just gonna stick to the cyans and the blues, and that's gonna help match R2-D2 with Obi-Wan. And we can even go ahead and lower the opacity a bit on this. All right, from here, let's add a new layer beneath. And we're gonna find a nice dark, deep blue tone to use. And this is gonna be our shadows beneath R2-D2. So I'm just using 20% uh, opacity right now, just softly introducing some shadows beneath him. Okay, and this should do it for R2-D2 for the moment. We can now move on to C-3PO. Just like R2-D2, we're gonna highlight these layers, press Command-J to duplicate them, then Command-E, merge them together. And this way we have a backup copy. For the top layer, we're gonna convert that into a smart object. All right, from here, we're gonna bring in an exposure adjustment layer and really bring this down because right now he is just way too bright, goodness. So something right around here. All right, and then using our black color, we're gonna bring some of this back in. Um, he is in the back, so he primarily needs to be pretty dark. However, he doesn't need to be completely invisible. So let's paint some of him back in so we can still see him. And this gold's a bit too much for me, so I'm gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, desaturate this quite a bit. And now I need to introduce those blue tones, so we're going back to that color balance adjustment layer, again, just sticking to the cyans and blues, so that way he pretty much matches everybody else here. And then let's go ahead and just lower the opacity on both of these adjustments. And then lastly, we're gonna add a new layer beneath C-3PO so that way we can paint in some shadows. Okay, our characters all look like they fit in this environment very well. I now wanna create the effect that Obi-Wan is being projected from R2-D2. So let's first find a good blue tone to use. And then I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool and just create this little selection from R2-D2's projector here. All right, and we'll connect that. And then we're gonna use that blue and just paint in this within the selection here. So I'll just do different levels of opacity. And obviously the closer we get to the projector, I'll do something a little bit brighter and increase the opacity on that as well. And I like this, let's press Command D to deselect this. And then we're gonna group these layers together. And then let's add a layer mask on top of this and just erase some of this edge so it's not very harsh. We wanna create a more feathered look, and that way it's gonna be a bit more realistic. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing on this bottom part. Okay, let's go ahead and add a new layer on top. We're gonna to add some highlights onto R2-D2. So let's find a nice light blue color to use, and we're just gonna paint just on the front edge of R2-D2, mainly because that's where the light is gonna be reflected off of from the projector. And I just want this to be a very thin line on the edge there. If it bleeds too much onto the body, we're just gonna go ahead and erase some of that. But this is looking really nice. All 
All right, we're now gonna add a second round of highlights and this is gonna be primarily on the front of his body. So we'll just paint on the front here and then we can find a good blend mode to use. So that overlay looks good. And we'll just continue to work around the body here and hitting these areas that's gonna be mostly affected by the projection. And now we need to add highlights on a see-through PO, which can be pretty easy. We're just gonna use a solid color adjustment layer, clip it below, and we're gonna put this into an overlay blend mode. From here, let's reduce the opacity quite a bit so it's not too powerful. And let's just see what it looks like before and after. Maybe we'll turn this down a bit more. Okay, and then we're gonna go to filter, down to blur and add Gaussian blur. Since he's in that background and not our main focus, we just wanna make him a bit more fuzzy. And now that our characters are taken care of, we need to start introducing this light into our scene here. So we're gonna go into our background group and in our ground group, we're gonna add a solid color adjustment layer and find something blue that matches our projection. And from here, we're gonna put this into a soft light blend mode. Okay. And we can even make this a bit more prominent. So let's add a color balance adjustment layer on top of this. So that way we can just introduce more blue tones within the ground itself. So we'll just stick to the blue, the cyan within our mid-tones, highlights, and shadows. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to add that same effect and those same steps to the rest of the elements in our background and within our scene itself. So I'm gonna take care of that real quick. I'll be back with you in just a second. All right, I am back and finished with all of that. What I wanna do now is add a blur to this cargo that's on the ground. And I'm just gonna to stick to something pretty low so this 0.5 pixels looks good. And now I want to add a solid color adjustment layer to use for our highlights. So let's clip it, uh, put it into an overlay blend mode, command I to invert that mask. And let's just paint on back on some of these edges here and bring back some of these highlights. And I'm only working with 20% opacity and not going overboard with this. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a few more spots here. And then what I wanna do is I wanna brighten up this ground even more. So we're just gonna add a, a couple more spots of glow uh, from this projection on the ground. Okay, let's double click on that layer, go down to blend if, alter option, click on this anchor, so that way we can bring back some of this dark color. All right, we're at the point now where we're primarily just adding these final touches in. So maybe I'll add just a few more spots here on the ground. Then I actually wanna go back into the ground group itself, add an exposure layer underneath this solid color adjustment layer, and then we're gonna darken it up just a bit more. All right, so let's do something like that. Okay, and then within our OB1 group, we can switch to white and let's just add a bit of uh, some pop of highlights here on top of him, just brighten some areas up. All right, then we can add another layer underneath that. And this is gonna be a little bit more highlight work onto his actual uh, robe here. So we're just gonna touch up some of these edges and brighten up some of this area here to again, just give him some more highlights. All right, let's go ahead and darken up this door. Um, forgive me guys, I'm just kind of bouncing all over the place right now. Like I said, I'm just at the point where we are adding these final little adjustments. And I'm also wanna go ahead and make this a bit more blurred. So we're gonna add some Gaussian blur on that. And finally, we are at the point where we can go ahead and merge all of these layers together and go into the camera raw filter. And within here, I'm just gonna add some of those final adjustments. I'll be back with you in just a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with our final and complete composition. And thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching this composition. I think the elements came together very nice. 
If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click that like icon. I would really appreciate that support. As mentioned earlier on in this video, we only have five days left. So we are winding down to our 30 days of Photoshop. Um, I hope to see you back tomorrow with our next tutorial. I've got some fun things planned for these remaining five days. So I hope you take the time to check them out. Uh, best wishes to you all. Take care.